STAR, the Center for Satellite Applications and Research, is the organization within NOAA that's charged with bringing the power of environmental observing satellites to NOAA's missions. NOAA's mission is to provide science, service, and stewardship. First and foremost is to protect life, property, and uh, economic vitality. So STAR is critical and essential to NOAA's mission because it brings the satellite expertise necessary to translate raw observations into useful information. How that's used is, for example, in uh, forecast models, the vast majority of data that's used to initialize them is satellite data, so they have to have very high quality data in order to be able to work uh, successfully. I tend to class STARS users into four categories. First is the models, second is operational users that need uh, data and information for situational awareness downstream value-added product providers that will take satellite-based data and combine it with other things to make a new information product, and then finally research users which are developing new environmental understanding and capabilities for use by operational agencies. So STAR serves as a model on how to effectively transition new science from new instruments into operational applications that benefit all aspects of society. The Geostationary Lightning Mapper is the first instrument of its kind which launched two years ago. Uh, it's providing continuous total lightning observations over a near hemispheric field of view. So we can observe the total lightning, the intracloud and cloud to ground lightning all the way from the west coast of Africa to New Zealand. So the GLM allows forecasters to track embedded convection. It allows them to identify storm mode and how that evolves with time. They are able to gain insights on whether storms are strengthening and weakening, and they're also able to characterize the storms as they transition offshore. Satellite altimetry is a measure of the height of a water surface, such as the ocean or a lake or a river, that's made from a satellite. The ocean is not like a bathtub. It's not a, just a big blob of uniform water. It has cold spots and warm spots. It has strong currents, like rivers moving through part of it. And altimetry is really the only instrument that gives you, um, in essence, a, a snapshot of that. The information that we make could be used by a fisherman wanting to know if it's an appropriate time to go out and look for the type of fish you want. It could be used by someone running an aquaculture farm wanting to know if harmful conditions are about to occur in the ocean just, just outside of their farm. It could be used by someone trying to monitor a remote lake or river. Is that river drying up? Or alternatively, is it about to flood and wipe away some village? Environmental satellites uh, feed into numerical weather prediction models. Uh, we call this discipline a satellite meteorology. You use satellite observations of ocean, land, and atmospheres to feed into numerical weather prediction models to provide both short-term as well as a seasonal or long-term long forecast of the environment. There are three different types of uh, products that study a variety of parameters for global change research. Uh, one of the most widely used is the sea surface temperature. Uh, the sea surface temperature record goes back up to early 80s till now. We also have temperature and moisture uh, soundings or profiles of the atmosphere from our polar satellites that goes back to the late 70s as well. Uh, then the third type of data sets, it covers land. We use a lot of uh, vegetation indices which are used to study global uh, vegetation dynamics which are related to aspects such as global food security, food production, net primary production, uh, disturbances in land use and land cover, uh, both for due to the anthropogenic as well as non-anthropogenic factors such as fires, uh, deforestation, etc. The big data challenge, as we commonly call it, is already here. We have a lot more observations from satellite than we can handle. And that's why STAR is looking at new alternatives at how to handle those data, including artificial intelligence, numerical approaches like machine learning, and so on. AI is a transformational technique that we have been exploiting for a couple of years now, and it has been demonstrated to add efficiency and improvement in forecast skills. So we used it for calibration, we used it for transformation of raw data into geophysical data, and we used it also hand-in-hand -hand with the weather forecasting systems to help in those skills. 
There will always be a big need for satellite observations and it will grow over time because of the unique characteristics of those and the demands of our users. So STAR will continue to do what it has traditionally done, which is bring the satellite expertise to NOAA's mission. The vision is to move to basically a digital twin of the Earth's environment. Uh, which the users can draw from, which we can draw from to create uh, the time-critical products that they need for their operations.